I don't know how I thought about that. And then I said, you know, I must, I need to express myself. And then the teachers in La Salle Primary School in Pataling Jaya, where I went through my entire education, were very interested in developing different skills for the students and how to keep a boys' class controlled, <laughs> you know, when they are so rowdy and, you know. Uh, and one of the things they did was to always have elocution, uh, debates, and also a little drama, ske uh. sketches. So this is what I did from about standard three, and I remember that very clearly. So there's a whole group of our classmates. We would write our own scripts. We would present it, and w there was a competition, and my class always won. Mm. And I mean always, right from standard three up, up till upper six. Oh. That's all I did. I did a lot of elocution. I was a Selangor State oratory champion, you know, that kind of thing. But I'm talking about the 70s. I don't even know whether you were born then, but you know. So, oh. uh, <laughs> so this was the, the background that I came from. So dance, per se, was never a part of it. But theatre was, drama was, public speaking was. So I liked that sort of immediacy of interaction with the audience because you sense instantly what they're thinking, what they're feeling, and you respond accordingly. Do they like what you're saying? Do they disagree with what you're saying? How do you then respond to the questions that they may have and in a debate situation and so on? And this then, you know, I was also good in school, so I went to University of Malaya and pursued a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, which I was good at at that time. And uh, it was in university that I realized that, you know, the, the way, coming from La Salle PJ, which was a very multiracial school, mm -hmm. and the interaction between all of us was incredibly close. Uh, there was never a question about being divided by race, religion, or social status. And I loved that. But then when I went to University of Malaya, I was actually shocked. And it was my first real experience of racial polarization in the country. And I was very disturbed because the only people who would talk to me, or and they wouldn't really talk to me, were the Indian group, and you had to belong to the Tamil language society. And I'm not Tamil, neither am I Tamil speaking. <laughs> I'm a Malayali. And so, uh, you know, I'm so, sort of caught between the devil and the deep blue sea, the rock and a hard place. So what do I do, you know? So I was really, really unhappy. And I never realized how unhappy I was um, at that time. It was just trying to find a space, you know? And, uh, and then uh, there was an audition for um, the Literary and Drama Society's musical, uh. you know. So I said, oh, well, let me try this. I haven't done this in a while. It's not in school, right? So I did, and then I got a part in a very small musical that was written by uh, Gilbert Almeida, uh, Gerald de Cruz, uh, and Gerald Martinez, who all became reporters with NSD and Malay Mail and all that, you know. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> it was very funny because I played the part of the student. It was a little, lovely little musical, I remember it. And then they brought in a choreographer and they said, okay, this lady will choreograph for you. And then uh, I tried to do a choreography and I did it all right, I suppose. But I, I felt that a choreography wasn't suitable for the character since I used my director's cap. Okay. And I thought, no, this doesn't work. So I said to Gilbert, I remember, I'm going to choreograph this myself having had zero experience in choreography or dancing. The arrogance of youth. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going to do this myself. He said, okay, if you can do it any better. And, so, and the lady was okay with that? Well, I don't know. I, she never became a friend. <laughs> so I can't even remember who she was. So, you know, obliterated from my memory. So I choreographed it and it was great. And that led me on to this journey of dance. So I went to join Kasuma, Kasunian University yes, Malaya. Yes. And uh, the teacher was Said Manap Arwa. Uh, we called him Uncle Bob. And he loved me. And he said, you remind me exactly of uh, Dr. Gauss Nasiruddin. Because I was dark skinned and I had a beard at that time. Uh. So did Dr. Gauss, right? And I didn't know who the hell Dr. Gauss was, you know. How dare you compare me with somebody else? I'm an individual, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I think I had that great youthful arrogance and the kind of never say die attitude. And, you know, uh, I think I'm more mellow now, I think. Uh, I know I probably was quite unpleasant as a person, but I don't know. Uh, so anyway, 
uh, Sain Manam said, you know, Joseph, you're really a good dancer. And I never thought about it, but he said, what you need to do now is you need to go for ballet and modern dance class. And this is an old Malay gentleman, one of the senior teachers of the Taman Budaya and that generation of uh, Malay dancers, to have that kind of foresight. And I was like, what is this man talking about? Okay, I'm going to go in for ballet and modern dance class. Mm -hmm. So I found a teacher who was a friend of a friend, Susan Menon, Francis Chiu, and that led me to Lili Lan, uh, where, who was then giving scholarships for male dancers. So you only paid 10 ringgit, and you didn't even have to pay if you didn't have money. So she had a whole classroom of boys, male dancers. And that was a generation of Malay male dancers who have really gone on to do some incredible things, you know, in uh, our lives. And that includes Unku Majid, who went to the UK and performed in theatre and musical theatre. Vic Nandran Sivalingam, who worked for Royal Shakespeare Company. Wow. David Lee, who's still dancing in the West End. Uh, Chu Ti Kuang and um, Lao Ming Yang are both very respected contemporary dance artists. So that was the class that I worked with. So it was incredible. So as my degree was drawing Why to... Why because there were no, not enough male dancers oh. in the country at that time. So she wanted to encourage it. Right. So that's why she gave these uh, scholarships. And from there I said, okay, I think I really want to do this as a career. So I finished my BSc badly. And then I said, okay, I'm <laughs> going to go to the UK or London or New York or Australia. I had three choices. And this is before the time of, uh, you know, internet, right? Yeah. So I had to go to Lincoln Center. I went to British Council browse through the magazines, take their videos back home, go to the video shop, you know, make recordings, save it. So I learned about Martha Graham and Paul Taylor and Royal Ballet in the early 80s when it was not exposed in Malaysia. So because of my hunger for that kind of knowledge, this is what I did. And, you know, um, then I started working professionally for Kuala Lumpur Dance Theatre that was started by Mrs. Lee in 1984, and before that with Francis and so on. So at the end of my career, uh, of my dance studies, I said, this is what I want to do. Uh, so I got an offer from a university in America on a partial scholarship. Then Mrs. Lee said, oh, you really want to do this? To Vic and myself. And we both said yes. Then she said, okay, I'll try and get you a partial scholarship or an introductory scholarship in the UK, because she had contacts. Mm -hmm. So she did. And we went to London in 1986 or 87. And, uh, and the trial scholarship was, you had to prove yourself in three months whether they would Isn't continue. It, yeah. So I stayed for three years and did a whole diploma, uh, diploma in teaching ballet, uh, teaching modern dance, uh, musical theatre. And then all that time I was auditioning and right after I graduated, I got into The King and I with Unku. Uh, mind you, I was the lead dancer. He was my understudy, <laughs> you know. I better write that down in case he changes history and facts, you know. So, so that was that. And then, you know, my mom was getting older by 1991, 92, and I thought, well, I need to come back and see how she is and what's going on. By that time, everybody had been married and gone off. So I came back to Malaysia thinking that I'd stay just for a couple of years and then go back to the UK, continue with my master's and so on. But then when I came back to Malaysia, what happened was it, they started ASK. Academy Sydney Kabangsaan in 1994. <laughs> so it was all very fortuitous, you know. So I was at the right place at the right time with the right skills. Right. So um, that's how my ASK career started. I thought, okay, I'll stay here for a couple of years. The couple of years ended up to be 22. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, it just one thing led to another. It was yeah. great. I was excited. You know, I was happy to wake up in the morning and do this job. Academy Seni Kebangsaan mm. turns out later to be Aswara. It then became Aswara in 2006. Right. Yeah. So you were sort of like one of the founders. I was one of the pioneer lecturers. Yes. The money, of course, came from the Kementerian Kebudayaan, Ministry of Culture. And uh, so they wanted to put together a college that taught performing arts. And uh, it was exciting. And I was just uh, thinking about the types of graduates we had at the beginning were mostly those who didn't do well in school, you know, they had just three or four credits, but they had a lot of talent. And today these people are really looked up to in the industry, you know, for example, Juhara Ayub is an award-winning yes. TV actress. Yes. Um, Namron, yes. no, needs no introduction. Yes. He went through such difficult times, but he is who he is today because of those times. He's an early graduate. 
um, Nozi Zizel Kifli, Maleni Jean Erwan, Rosdine Subo, Colleen Wong. Four of them have their PhDs mm -hmm. in theatre and music. And these are people who would have never thought of doing that if they hadn't come to Aswara ASK. Mm -hmm. But I think the beauty of a school and a college like that was that we empowered young people. So I was a part-time lecturer at first in 1998. They asked me to be the dean of the School of Dance. Now that was a real shock because in my mind, I'm still, you know, a showboy, a showbiz person, you know. <laughs> I just want to be on stage, I want to do that. <laughs> but I was, you know, 38 at that time and I said, oh, nobody else is here who wants to do this. Right. <clears throat> and so I said, okay, let me give it a shot. And I remember talking to the then KSU, who was uh, Ismail Adam, a very wonderful man, and uh, Dr. Tunku Alaudin, who was really scary, but <laughs> I was very, very fond of both these gentlemen because of their passion. They were civil servants, but they were passionate about this project, the project of Aswara ASK, you know? And I said to them, okay, I'll take on this job. By that time, the School of Dance actually had, in 1998, zero intake. There was nobody coming to our college at that time. So I said, oh, give me a couple of years. If you think I'm not doing a good job, I'll be happy to step aside for something else. Or they thought maybe they'll merge it with theater, you know? Yeah. So, I said, okay. And the other thing was, we didn't have young people coming. We just had people from like Istana Budaya. We also didn't have anyone except Malays. So we were really racially also restricted. So I said, these are very clearly then what I need to do. I need to appeal to the Chinese community, the Indian community and whoever. I need to appeal to young people. So then began a whole series of changing the curriculum, getting new lecturers, doing productions and so on, and I'm, you know, really proud to say that it has been an incredible 18 years of being there and developing the curriculum, and, you know, we've had some of the most outstanding dancers and choreographers in the country mm -hmm. that were my students, you know, so yeah. that was that.